Welcome to the Joy at Work podcast. Regular listeners will immediately notice a change in format for this podcast. We hope that you like it, and we'd love to hear your thought on this in your comments. I'm Alex and I am joined by our resident behavioral neuroscientist and expert leadership coach, Dr. John Kenworthy. Alex, it's great that you're here with me today. Today, we're discussing why you need a rocket ship for your life. Welcome to your Joy at Work podcast, Dr. John. First off, I think we need to understand what is a rocket ship for life. The rocket ship for life came about because I used to suffer from a major problem. Basically, I was easily distracted. Teachers could rarely get, let alone keep my attention. I'd start a new project only to get quickly bored, frustrated, and I moved on to the next shiny object. If ADHD had been popular back then, eh, perhaps I could have got myself medicated for it. And it wasn't because I lacked goals. I had much that I wanted to achieve in my career, but for some strange reason, I was always looking for something. I couldn't get or keep focus long enough to stick with it and finish. The big issue, it turned out, was not lack of clear goals not an inability to focus. It was that there were gaps in what I was trying to achieve. There was no balance. And it's what many have badly described as work-life balance. But what I prefer to call work-life integration is where you identify your desired intent in the five key areas of your life as the drivers of the things that you do every day, steered by your values and aligned to your overall purpose or mission in life. If you ask most people what they want from life, they'll tell you a variation of to be happy and successful, what the Bible calls good success in Joshua 1 verse 8. Some people think that more money will make them happy. The problem is, money is a great servant, but a lousy master. And so what if you achieve great success at work, if you spend all your time at work and neglect your family and health? As I mentioned, we have identified five key areas in life that, when attended to fully, will bring you real happiness and success as you fulfil them. What are the five key areas? These five key areas are like the engines of a rocket ship that you ride towards your life purpose. Your values are the way you steer and choose which paths you are following. And the five areas that we've uncovered through our research are number one, family and relationships. Number two, health and well-being. Thirdly, in the middle, spiritual fulfilment. Fourthly, your personal development, and fifthly, your work and career. As you can imagine, like most people, I'd paid great attention to work and career, and I'd found it increasingly difficult to keep steering straight. I was working 80 plus hours every week. Ah, This was in the days when I was in the hotel and restaurant business. No breaks rarely a weekend off and scant holidays, and I'd gotten away with it health-wise for a good few years, but it really shouldn't have surprised me when my body rebelled and finally got me to pay a lot more attention to my health and well-being when my heart threw a hissy fit in 2014. Wow, that must have been life-changing. Yes, it was. See, when you neglect an engine, it's always going to be much more difficult to keep going towards your purpose and very easy to get blown off course. It's why your life and work are off balance, not integrated. Do most people have this all planned out? Not at all. In the many years I've been coaching, fewer than 20% have anything remotely resembling balance. And they've usually been coached before or have had their own health or personal crisis. There's many a successful person in the boardroom whose family life is in shambles. Why these five areas? And is one more important than the others? Well, as you think about each one, you'll realise that if you stop feeding one of these areas and consider the repercussions in your own life, 
if you show no ambition in your work, your career stagnates. It just becomes a routine you can do with your eyes shut. Your brain becomes inactive and you are simply marking time until one day you retire. And then what? Well, let's say you don't bother with personal development after school or college and you learn nothing new. Now everything in your life stagnates. Your brain is bored because it's a learning machine. And when your brain is bored, you get depressed because you lack serotonin and dopamine. And then you'll opt out of everything else life has to offer. That's not good. Not at all. If you neglect your spiritual man, then there's a big hole in your life. An emptiness that you cannot quite put your finger on. You'll try and fill it with all sorts of other things, but nothing ever seems to satisfy. Neglect your health and well-being and your body will one day, sooner or later, quit entirely. Your brain tried to keep you not dead. It's its job. But somehow you resisted that urge until it too gave up fighting you. Neglect your family and or your relationships and you will soon be alone. And humans are social animals. You have an innate desire to belong to a tribe, to matter, to others. So you need all five of these engines. Yes, we all need all of these engines. And just like a vehicle engine, you need to keep it maintained properly. The trouble is everyone is fundamentally lazy. Or perhaps fairer to say that your brain is fundamentally lazy. If there is a do nothing option, your brain will take it because doing anything requires effort, which burns scarce energy. So if you do not deliberately attend to each of your engines, your brain will neglect them until something breaks. Absolutely right, Alex. If we're going to burn fuel in these five areas, you're saying that we need to have a reason for doing so. Each engine needs a driver or motivation for the brain to switch from its default do nothing to do something, to get whatever we intend to get. So we need to tell our brain specifically what we intend to get. Yes, once we do something, then your brain is prepared to spend that precious fuel in that area. Why not set a simple goal or a smart goal? Goals are great and smart goals are even better. However, Command intent is usually more suited to changing situations, which is real life. And very importantly, it has an embedded purpose. This is what turns your brain on to motivation. I've written a lot on why goal setting matters, and we'll share a link in the show notes, OK? Establishing command intent in each area really matters then. Absolutely. No one climbs aboard a space rocket, ready to launch into the heavens, and then asks, so where should we go today? And no one replies, ah, I don't know, let's just start off and we'll go from there. No, every time there is a clear command intent for the mission, and each and every engine has a very precise role in achieving that intent to help the rocket, ship and crew fulfil the mission. What's the difference between purpose, mission, and intent? We don't have time here today to delve into that difference between purpose and intent. Uh, suffice to say for now, your purpose is why you were born. It's your overall mission. Your command intents, plural, are what you achieve along the journey to fulfill your purpose or mission in life. Let's get practical. How do you establish command intent in each of these five areas of your life? If you ask most people what they intend to achieve in their career, their career goal, for example, and you'll probably get a very vague answer about money, position, happiness level, and maybe a job title. Honestly, that's about as useful as telling a blind footballer that the goal is at the end 
of the pitch. Which end, you ask? And many other questions besides. Not least is, how will you know when you have scored a goal? So we've got to change the question. Establishing a command intent for anything is simply a case of answering the question. What does success look like? What does success look like? Yes. And, and when I use the word look, I mean all of your senses, look, feel, taste, smell, sound, and be as specific as you can be. And when we're asking what does it look like, we mean literally what do, will you see with your eyes in reality and in as much rich detail as you can. And you repeat that with feel, emotions and touch. Smell, which is the most evocative and immediate of your senses, taste and sound. And if it's not evident in your answers, how will you know that you've achieved it? How will you measure your achievements? You will ask, what will you win or gain? And what will you lose when you have achieved it? This bit is the embedded purpose. And lastly, one more question here. By when? We need some time here. When this is full of very rich sensory descriptions, you will have a captivating picture of your future. And you do this for all five areas of your life. You'll find it helpful and motivational to have a very clear command intent in all five areas of your life. Your work and career, your family and relationships, your spiritual life, your health and your personal development making sure that they support each other and are congruent. Miss one area and you are at risk struggling to steer your life purposefully forward. You said, by when? Is this just for the long-term future? It's best to have command intents for the short, medium and long-term. Most of my clients find it helpful to establish these command intents in three time frames, short, medium and long term futures. Whatever is short, medium or long term for you. A little aside here on future time frames. Most teams seem to struggle with a long term time frame of 10 years, as the most young adults. As we get older, it becomes easier to imagine further into the future. What's next? If you lead a team, then you are responsible for identifying a worthy and compelling vision and articulating it to the team. People continually need to be shown the team's compass clearly and creatively so that their actions align and they stay motivated with a captivating picture of their future. In their book, uh, Made to Stick, Chip and Dan Heath share help from the unit in charge of military simulations for NATO, the Combat Maneuver Training Centre, who recommend that officers arrive at the commander's intent by asking themselves this question. And I've adjusted this for use with personal intents. If I do nothing else tomorrow, I must. Dot, dot, dot. So that, dot, dot, dot. Answer this question in each of your five key life areas and every day. You will have that often elusive, almost mythical balance. Where can you go to learn more? As an advantage coaching client, we'll help you fine tune your rocket ship for life so that you have a crystal clear, captivating picture of the future and what your success in each of these areas of your life look like. And we'll guide you on that path that will equip and empower you to achieve them. You can apply for your complimentary Advantage Discovery Session today, and we'll discuss it. 
and that's without any obligation, other than to join your scheduled discovery session. Without obligation. Thanks, John, for your insights into the rocket ship for life and how we can achieve work-life integration. By establishing a captivating picture of our own future, in the five key areas of our life, so that our engines run well and we are motivated to achieve our own success. Thanks, and be greatly blessed. We hope that you've enjoyed this Joy at Work podcast and this new format with me, Alex, asking our resident behavioral neuroscientist and expert leadership coach, Dr. John Kenworthy, to guide us in developing our leadership so that we can have joy at work and our team is united in trust and collaboration. Do remember to let us know what you think of the new format and, if you haven't done so, subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast platform. And do remember to tell others who you think will find this podcast useful for their own leadership development.